Story 1. My Ghostly Experiences I was 16 at the time. I was visiting my grandparents in Alberta with my sister Katie and my cousin Lily. Keep in mind, my grandparents' house was always creepy. You'd have that eerie feeling like you were being watched or you weren't alone. We were home alone. My grandparents would went off to bingo night. My sister was downstairs in the basement doing laundry and homework while me and my cousin were upstairs watching TV. All of a sudden, I heard my sister shout my name. So I went running downstairs. I found her sitting in a chair, looking like she had seen a ghost. She had tears running down her face. I asked what was wrong, and she said that she had been folding clothes, when suddenly she heard the pages in a book turning. She went to check it out, and the pencil from the desk came rolling towards her. After she told me this, I was so scared, but I didn't really believe it right away. I'm the skeptical one, but the look in her eye and the seriousness in her voice made me believe her that something had happened. Not long afterward, I called my cousin Lily down. She came running. We told her what had happened, and she looked like she didn't believe us. That changed when we all heard a loud bang coming from upstairs. No one was up there. We were in a wooden area, and both doors were locked. The nearest house was about two miles away. We tried debunking it, but nothing made sense. And then, again, to our surprise, we heard the same loud bang from upstairs. Again. It sounded as if someone was stomping their feet on the floor. My heart was racing, but it doesn't stop there. Then we heard what sounded like someone shuffling their feet in the hallway upstairs. By this time, we were all crying. We didn't know what to do. The shuffling moved towards the kitchen, and then we heard a chair pull out like someone had sat down. We were trying to keep our voice down, but then it got scarier. Whatever it was talked to us in our native language. It sounded like an elderly woman. We grabbed the cordless phone that was down there with it, and I called my dad. He didn't know what to do, and he was 180 kilometers away. I don't know what I was thinking calling him, but he was my first person. Then he told me that I needed to call my other grandfather, who lived in the air. So I did. It seemed like it took him forever to get there, and we kept hearing it talking upstairs. There we all were, huddled on the stairwell, waiting for my grandfather to get there. He finally did. Five minutes seemed like a lifetime. We heard him drive towards the back door. He knew we were at the bottom of the stairwell, and when he finally knocked on the back door, I told my cousin Lily to go and unlock it for him. We could still hear that voice talking to us. My grandfather came in, and he was shocked to find us all crying. He didn't know what was going on, but he knew that something was wrong. Thankfully, he saved the night that time. But another instance, sometime later, found all three of us home alone again. We were sitting in the living room, watching TV. The TV was right beside a big living room. It was about 11 p.m., the usual time for my grandparents to get back. We saw the glove vehicle headlights coming towards the house. And we all said, oh, they're home now. My grandfather always joked around, like he'd shut his headlights off so that he would could try to scare us. This vehicle shut its headlights off, and I thought, ha ha, he shut his headlights off, he's going to try to scare us. And then we all started to chuckle a bit. We waited at the couch, waiting to hear the footsteps at the door. But nothing. It was so strange. It doesn't usually take them three minutes to get out of their vehicle and walk to the front door. Lily walked to the window to check and see if they were there. And when she peeked out, she looked back at us and said, They're not here. Nobody's out there. My heart started beating really. And then we all got the nerve to go outside. It had snowed pretty hard that night, and there were no tracks at all. Fresh snow had just fallen. If a car had pulled up the driveway, we'd have saw tire tracks. Something was definitely weird about that house. Story 2. The Ghost of Logan Square This true event happened to me. One night my eyes were open, and the first time in a long time, I could sense and see. It was September of 1990, and some friends of mine were taking a weekend holiday and asked me if I could house sit for them. Their apartment was gorgeous. A gray stone building in Chicago's Logan Square neighborhood. I'd been there many times before. But this particular time, something felt different from the moment I stepped into the foyer. I was with another person. A friend of mine at the time, and we got ourselves situated and ordered pizza. Before the pizza arrived, I decided to take a shower in the master bathroom. While I was showering, 
I felt like someone was in the shower stall with me, watching me. I couldn't see them, but I knew someone was there. A feeling of uneasiness came over me, and my heart started pounding in my chest. I hurried as fast as I could to dry myself and get dressed. Simple sweatpants and a t-shirt. I ran out of the bathroom, almost slipping on the marble floor. I told my friend what I felt, but he just laughed it off. He said the apartment was big and usually full of people laughing and having a good time, and now it felt empty. It seemed like a logical explanation as to why I was feeling a little spooked, but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something was watching, waiting, and then he went to take a shit. And as he did, I sat on the edge of the bed in the master bedroom, waiting for him to finish. The whole time, I kept looking around, feeling on edge. It was warm outside, and we had the windows open, but I felt chilled to the bone. He was still in the shower when the doorbell rang. I knew it was the pizza guy, so I grabbed money and quickly walked down the long hallway to the li- As I reached the middle of the living room, I suddenly stopped. I was just a few feet from the front door, and from the corner of my eye, I could see a dark shadow at the end of the dining room table. I must have done a Michael Jordan leap to the front door, because I opened it so fast that the pizza guy was startled. Feeling a little embarrassed, I grabbed the pizza and handed him the money. I told him to keep the change. I walked as fast as I could to the kitchen to get two glasses with ice. They had an old refrigerator with aluminum trays, but I couldn't pull the lever back on the ice tray because someone had overfilled the water. While struggling to pull the lever, I could feel someone in the kitchen watching me. All the hairs on my neck and arms were standing at attention. I swear I felt someone touch the back of my neck, move my long hair. I grabbed everything and ran down the hall. My friend told me I needed to risk that I was letting my imagination run wild. I told him it was not my imagination. I knew what I saw. I knew what I felt. It was all too creepy. Instead of trying to comfort me, he was making me feel like I was crazy. I ate some pizza. We watched a little TV. And then we fell asleep. It must have been 2 a.m. When I was awakened by a strange noise of something being dragged across the floor. I opened my eyes, and at the foot of the bed were three beings. It was like a mist or a fog of some sort. I could make them out as a being, a woman, a man, and a small child. They were transparent, but I could see they were human form. Their eyes were large, dark holes. They were tall and thin. As they walked alongside each other, the woman suddenly noticed that I could see them. They were surprised and seemed As frightened as I was, she looked at the man and pointed in my direction. They all turned to look at me at the same time. My heart was beating so fast, I thought it would explode in my chest. I couldn't move to alert my sleeping friend. My body was paralyzed. All I could do was follow them with my eyes. I couldn't even speak because my tongue wouldn't move. The atmosphere in the room felt strange. I could see what looked like water reflection on the wall, kind of like how a pool dances on the walls around like sparkles of light. I lay there for what seemed like and then my body must have gave up. I woke up sometime later and while my eyes opened I could see the younger ghost or being or whatever it was was right in front of me slouched down with his face right in mine. I gasped and he took off to the foot of the bed and out the door where his parents stood watching and just like that they were gone vanished I didn't go back to sleep until sunrise. I never returned to that apartment again, nor did I see my so-called friend again. His loss. My friends who lived there never did explain anything. In fact, no one actually believed me when I told them. But I will never forget that night of terror in the apartment on Logan Square. Story 3. The Red-Eyed Hound. Several months back, my nephew was telling me about his mother's house, that my husband and I will be renting in the coming months. Somehow, we got him on the topic of hauntings, and then he told me that he had been seeing some weird stuff at his mother's house. He told me that a few times, he woke up in the middle of the night and heard an evil growling coming from outside his bedroom window. He said that it sounded really terrifying. I asked if he was sure he was awake. He said he was 100% awake, and he remembers waking up and hearing it, and had trouble going back to sleep that night. He said this has happened a few in the space of about six months. He went on to tell me something that made him really terrified. 
He said that he woke up in the middle of the night again to the sound of a low, menacing growl. Instead of the sound coming from outside, he said the sound was coming from the hallway inside his house. He tensed up and tried not to breathe too loudly. His eyes were locked on his bedroom door that was slightly ajar. He told me that he freaked out when he saw the door move and the tip of a dog's nose as it slowly stuck its head into his bedroom. He said that the black hound had glowing red eyes. And by that stage, he didn't know what to do other than flip on his bedside light. And as he did, the hound vanished and all was quiet. He said it hasn't happened again, but not too long after, he moved out and moved out of state. I'll be living in that house soon and I'll see for myself. Hopefully I don't see any. I've had my fair share of paranormal experience, but I don't really care to experience more. Story 4 the call. My dad died suddenly on Memorial Day. He had a heart attack while riding on his bike. It was a very hot day. He was 68 and in great health as far as we knew. He and my stepmother were ridiculous. They loved each other so much. They did everything together. They were best friends. One of those couples that gives you hope when you're veering towards being jaded and bitter about relationship. Needless to say, she devastated when he died. Broken. Inconsolable. Their wedding anniversary was June 19th. 6 19. They had this thing where they would say happy anniversary to each other on the 19th of every month for the whole 10 years of their marriage. It turned into a playful competition to see who could say it first. A day or two after my dad died, she received a phone call. The caller ID identified the call as coming from my dad's cell phone. The cell phone had been returned to her with his personal effect. The cell phone had a passcode, and it was locked since before he died. It was sitting in a cupboard, and it was turned off. She answered her phone, and there was no one there. It was just silence. It wasn't until she hung up that she noticed the time on the phone. The call came in at 6.19. I'm vaguely open-minded about the nature of conscious. At least I was until that. That changed me. It might be technical or logical or some reasonable explanation that could account for that. I don't know. It's just uncanny. And there's no doubt in my mind that the call was somehow caused by my dad to try to offer my stepmother the love and strength to get through the worst thing that had ever happened to her. I still get chills in a good way whenever I think about it. True love never dies. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Bye.